Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous Ides of March. Ides of March, the stormy Ides of March. Friday, March 15th, 2013, and I gotta do a quick round here, take a few minutes out of my party schedule. Good God Almighty, guys. You don't know what I'm dealing with. It's hard uh, to be a partier, but uh, somehow I will find a few minutes here to be a doomsday prophet and an environmental alarmist where I can just every Friday morning I click on my uh, email to get my two, as I say, favorite e-newsletters. One called Endangered Earth from the Center of Biological Diversity and then my number one favorite uh, newsletter of the apocalypse from mangabay.com where they survey the media, both the mainstream and the alternative media, to bring you just stories uh, about how the entire planet's going to hell in a handbasket and how more and more of our fellow Earthlings, thanks to us, are being sent off into oblivion. And so before the party cranks up in another hour here in Austin, Texas, let me look in to see what stories I have been missing about the collapse of this planet and the eternal destruction of more and more of our fellow earthlings while I have been out partying and I will put links on here if I have time if I have time I will put links on here how you two can sign up for these excellent excellent uh, newsletters. We're going to start off with our endangered earth from uh, Center for Biological Diversity and uh, so they're reporting a lot from this big uh, meeting about the trade in endangered species. I've talked a lot about this from my rock about these two million American American turtles, probably including the ones right here off of my rock in the creek, are being uh, rounded up in the United States of America and sent to China. Uh, let's see. So last week, the Convention on Trade and International Trade in, in Endangered Species voted to regulate and monitor international trade in Blanding's turtles, spotted turtles, and diamondback terrapins. So, uh, quote, turtle traders are depleting U.S. populations at a frightening rate. It has got to stop soon or we are going to lose these incredible animals from the wild. Uh, turtles already f uh, face threats from habitat destruction, water pollution, and being hit and killed by gas-sucking cars. Okay. Uh, let's see. It sounds like maybe a tiny, tiny ray of good news uh, about these, the, the U.S. Navy blowing up whales, basically. Uh, so, the, you know, the, the Navy wants to uh, crank up more and more of this, uh, of this sonar testing, blowing up the eardrums of all these whales. Let's see what the good news is. Uh, okay. Uh, the California Coastal Commission rejected a dangerous plan by the U.S. Navy. So the California Coastal Commission, one of my heroes, uh, has told the U.S. Navy to go screw itself. And you ain't going to do it off the coast of California. We will see if the California Coastal Commission can pull, push around the U.S. Navy or not. You have not heard the last of this story. Uh, let's see, here's another petition drive to stop the Keystone XL pipeline. Yeah, right, uh, enough of that. Let's see, here's Washi Washington State lawmakers want to make wolf killing easier. Well, the Washington DC lawmakers have already 
made it a hell of a lot easier to kill wolves, <coughs> at least in uh, Montana and Idaho. <coughs> and now Washington, all right, here, Washington State's wolves are finally making a comeback. But some state lawmakers want to make sure that the, their recovery is short-lived. The uh, Friday, the Washington State Senate approved a bill allowing the State Wildlife Commission to write rules allowing ranchers to kill endangered wolves and other predators without a permit, even if they are not attacking livestock there are a total of 51 wolves 51 wolves in the entire state of Washington and now uh, you can get a permit to uh, kill one on your ranch even if it's not eating your cows although my guess is they're killing them without the damn permits do you, do you think any rancher is gonna kill a wolf gives a shit whether he has some stupid little permit from the Wildlife Commission. Come on, guys. Okay, here, uh, last week I was talking about uh, the international trade in polar bear parts. Well, guess what, guys? Uh, world fails to ban international trade in polar bear parts. Uh, was defeated last week at this big, uh, you know, turtles, turtles got some protection. What's good enough for turtles is not good enough for polar bears. This is talking about the polar bear rug trade. The polar bear rug trade from Canada to China. About 800 polar bears are killed every year in, in Canada to make rugs uh, to send to China, and uh, that resolution failed. So 800 more polar bears. But what the hunters don't get, climate change will. Oh boy, I keep, every week I, I update you about the bat killing disease. It has now reached South Carolina and Georgia. I was reporting Illinois uh, last week, north to Illinois, south to, uh, is now in, is from Georgia to Illinois, uh, bats are dropping. Here we have, okay, the uh, center has filed a suit over a uranium mine threatening the Grand Canyon. Okay, so they have joined up with the Havasupai Indian tribe and uh, to sue the U.S. Forest Service for green lighting operations at the Canyon Uranium Mine, named after the Grand Canyon National Park, without completing or even starting tribal consultations and without updating a federal review written in 1986. So there you go. Uh, the mine falls within the one million acre mineral withdrawal uh, approved by the Obama administration in January 2012, which was supposed to protect the Grand Canyon's watershed from new uranium mining impacts. But I guess that didn't figure into their 26 year old uh, environmental impact statement. So they're just kind of ignoring that. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, well, anyway, guys, uh, that's what's going on here in the United States uh, in the news while I'm partying till I drop. While the old doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist is fiddling while Austin and the rest of the planet burns. Let's see what's going on on the, on the rest of the planet. So I'm going to turn my attention to my number one environmental alarmist doomsday prophet newsletter of them all. My letter from mongabay.com. Okay, news of the week. 
Starting off down there in the uh, Brazilian Amazon jungle near the, the famed Belo Monte Dam. If you do not know what the Belo Monte Dam is, good Lord. And so what has happened now, Tribe rejects payment from electricity company behind destructive Amazon Dam. Okay. Leaders of more than two dozen Kayapo indigenous communities have rejected a nine billion, I'm sorry, yeah, nine billion dollars, right, a nine million million dollar offer from Brazilian state energy company Electrobras to fund development projects in their region due to the firm's involvement in the construction of the Belo Monte Dam. So there you go. Is so th this is the uh, this is the classic thing. So these damn planet eaters down there, you, you know, in this in this massive, massive. I think it's the third biggest hydroelectric dam in the history of this planet. You know, drowning out all these all this rainforest and kicking out all these uh, Indians down there. So they're now trying to pay them off. And so they said, we don't want your damn money. We have lived here for 10,000 years without your, without your damn $9 million in, in your development projects in our communities. We live just fine down here with electricity for about 10,000 years. We didn't need your goddamn planetators then, and we don't need you now. They can't buy them off. So in the, next, the next stage is to throw them in jail, and the, and the stage after that is just kill the damn Indians. Okay, from the Amazon jungle, let's go over here to, uh, I guess this is Indonesia. Uh, in some state called Ase. Ase claims deal to open 1.2 million hectares. This is over two and a half million acres of already protected rainforest to logging and mining is next. Okay, here is Indonesia's Ministry of Forestry. The, the Ministry of Forestry over there in Indonesia is close to accepting a proposal to open up two and a half million acres of protected rainforest in Ase State for logging, mining, and oil palm production. There you go. <coughs> Two and a half million acres of rain of protected rainforest. The Ministry of Forestry is getting ready to sign off for mining, logging, and palm oil. What a surprise. Okay, from Indonesia, let's go over here to India, where burning coal may be killing over 100,000 people in India every year. Okay, not to mention all the thousands of people uh, it's killing outside of India. This is just in India. All right, India's dependence on coal-fired power plants for energy may be leading directly, directly to the deaths of 80,000 to 115,000 of its citizens every year. This is, uh, according to some, uh, one of these, one of these uh, environmental alarmist uh, journals, the report, uh, deals only with the direct health impact of coal burning and not <coughs> the indirect impacts of climate change being ramped up by all of these coal plants, probably burning coal mined right here in the United States, although I don't even know. Uh, even ignoring the rising pain of global warming, the bleak report outlines that coal consumption in India alone is causing over 20 million asthma attacks uh, and nearly a million emergency room visits every year. We're not even talking about China. All right. 
from uh, from India. Let's go over. Well, I talked about this story on Wednesday about this U.S. admiral claiming that climate change, not North Korea, is our biggest threat in the Pacific Ocean. I had that story. Uh, that climate change is the single biggest, according to this guy who spends his career analyzing threats, security threats, to the United States of America, the number one biggest security threat to this country, according to this four-star admiral. It, it, ain't, it ain't North Korea, guys. Uh, it, is, it, it is climate change. It is that coal burning over there in India. Okay, uh, then they look over there to that trade and endangered species. And so they're celebrating the fact that rosewood and ebony from Madagascar, Latin America, and Southeast Asia are now on the list of endangered species. We'll see if that, uh, if that helps stem the tide. Good luck. <clears throat> Here's an interesting story. We're going over here, I guess, to, uh, is it Madagascar? Where the hell do they, something? No, we're going over here to India, to some little, little uh, guy called the Slender Loris. The Slender Loris photographers threatening the already abused Slender Loris. Ha. Huh. So uh, this is some little nocturnal little primate, I guess. And they're talking about, they come out at night, and then all of these eco-tourists going over there, these eco-tourists. I've never done a rant on eco-tourism. So, they're, so the, they're going out there, and here are these little endangered, I guess they're not exactly monkeys, they're some sort of primate. So they come out, they're blinking their sleepy eyes, they come out at night, and uh, so, of course, all these guides know where the hell every one of these slender lores is. So they wake up at night, they come out here with their big old eyes, and the first thing they get is a, is a bunch of goddamn eco-tourists with their little digital cameras with the flash blinding them. Jesus Christ. It's never ending, guys. Okay, and then I've mentioned this story, I think it might have been last week or the week before, uh, talking about, gee, what a surprise, uh, parks and indigenous, ter indigenous territories are reducing Amazon deforestation. Well, isn't that the reason we have parks and indigenous territories? Okay, strict conservation areas and indigenous reserves are more effective at reducing deforestation in the Brit Brazilian Amazon uh, relative to these, quote, sustainable use areas set up for non-indigenous resource extraction. Uh, gee, uh, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, there's the sky is blue. Okay, now here's one. I, I had, a, you know, how many stories about elephant poachers? So, so here's a, uh, here, here's one reaction to the, to the wholesale global slaughter of elephants. We have prayers for dying elephants. Buddhists hold prayer ceremony for elephants decimated by poachers. Okay, Buddhist leaders prayed for slaughtered African elephants in Bangkok, Thailand last week. Uh, there you go. Buddhist monks, abbots, and leaders prayed for the tens of thousands of elephants that have been killed for their tusks. Uh, good luck, guys. I hope some of your prayers were backed up with uh, with uh, body uh, piercing uh, armor. You know, I hope some of your prayers had some bullets behind them for those sons of bitches. Okay, from there we go from Bangkok to Norway, 
where we have a, some good news. Norway's pension fund is dumping 23 palm oil companies under new deforestation policy. Good for you, Norway. So the Norway's $700 billion pension fund is no longer doing business with these planet raping, with these planet raping uh, palm oil companies. I'll get to a story about how Britain is dealing with palm oil stories in a minute when I get to it. <coughs> Okay, back to the Amazon jungle. We're talking about where the black caiman, and talking about trying to good luck bring, bringing the black caiman back from the brink of extinction. And right on top of that story, we go from the black caiman in the Amazon River to sharks and stingrays. They're getting some protection at this big uh, endangered species thing for the first time. Oh, hallelujah. Sharks and rays have won the vote for better protection. Let's see. Uh, five shark species and manta rays have now been listed as endangered species, which hopefully will result in some tougher regulations, but not an out right ban. So we will see how all these commercial fishermen is if they give a shit about this, you know, how they're going to get around these these regulations. Yeah, right. Uh, gee, here's uh, palm oil meets pygmy elephants in Borneo. No end of this shit. Borneo's pygmy elephants are under threat in Indonesia where their habitat is set to be converted uh, oh for rubber wow for rubber habon and sengon plantations uh, if the plan conversion goes ahead the entire elephant population in Borneo could go extinct. So these, uh, these, I guess it's not, I mean, it's all sorts. It's palm oil and everything completely obliterating uh, Borneo's pygmy elephants off the face of the earth. From there, we go to the entire planet. I think I mentioned this on Wednesday. Surely, here's the, uh, here's the no shit Sherlock uh, headline of the week. Human activity driving unprecedented temperature shift. <clears throat> Average global temperatures are now higher than at any point during the past 4,000 years. I, I, I had that rant on Wednesday. Okay. And going on hand in hand with that, an increasing number of Americans believe climate change is real. Okay, so more and more Americans are at least pulling their head out of their ass that climate change is real and caused by humans, whether that's getting them out of their gas-sucking car or not. Huh. We'll wait and see on that one. Uh... Okay, I mentioned uh, Norway dumping all of their business with these palm oil idiots. So here's what's going on down there in the UK, just south of, uh, of Norway. Despite deforestation worries, UK approves palm oil for power production. Jesus Christ. British Parliament has approved new government subsidies for biofuel use in UK power stations. Controversially, yeah right, the new measure would potentially subsidize biofuels produced from palm oil. 
a move environmentalists warn could exacerbate deforestation in Africa and Southeast Asia, and I would throw in Latin America on that list too. So there you go. That's a way to fight climate change. Instead of coal, we will use palm oil uh, to power our big screen TVs. Oh, and here, okay, guys, talking. So here we go. Let's go from there to greenwashing. Where? Well, let's go over there. Let's see what Gucci, what, what all you save the planet Gucci handbag shoppers. You can save the planet by buying one of the one of Gucci's new zero deforestation handbags. Good Lord, in the greenwashing uh, horseshit story of the week. <laughs> Gucci has rolled out its collection of zero deforestation leather handbags. Each bag comes with a passport <coughs> that provides the history of the product's supply chain. Good for those planet savers over there with their zero deforestation handbags. Oh boy, from, from Gucci, let's go over there to Dunkin' Donuts. We go from the high end to the low end where, uh, where we have Dunkin' Donuts uh, has agreed to source 100% of its palm oil under the round table, uh, round table on, on sustainable palm oil. So here we go. Good for you, Dunkin' Donuts. I'll clap for you with one hand. Uh, they're, they're, at least they're, they're making the, the greenwashing move. At least their palm oil, uh, they're, 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 this is their halfway compromise with environmentalists. At least uh, they're, they're, they're joining that their, their palm oil is, quote, sustainable. Guys, there is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. Jesus Christ is one of the most unsustainable products on this planet. But, uh, but, but, but at least the ones who have this horse shit brand of approval is a little bit better. It's like choosing uh, the swine flu over cancer. So, uh, so Dunkin' Donuts is bringing you the swine flu instead of cancer. Good for you. Two more stories to round out this one. Uh, to this uh, captive frogs may be spreading diseases to their wild cousins across Southeast Asia. Jesus. Scientists have documented a series of links between exotic frogs for trade and diseases in wild frogs in Southeast Asia, including the first documented case of the chytrid fungus, a virulent and lethal disease in Singapore that's killing frogs all over this planet. And let me end up today's uh, planet going to hell in a handbasket rant with this simple story. China delays carbon tax. This, here you go. It says it all. China will not introduce a carbon tax in 2013 reports Bloomberg. My <coughs> heroes at Bloomberg. China ain't going to have a carbon tax in 2013, and you better damn well believe the good old U.S. of A. is going to have no carbon tax in the year 2013, so the number one and the number two biggest uh, emitters of green of carbon dioxide in the gas and gases into the atmosphere you can don't worry there will be no carbon tax in China or the U.S. 
but uh, I got to wrap up uh, my the, the, my doomsday prophecy environmental alarmist rant, and because I got a party to get to, it is party time uh, on uh, this spectacular weekend in South Austin, Texas. So the old doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist uh, has got to run off, get back to his party. Bye, guys.